Now here's a personal pet peeve of mine. I don't like people who rave on and on and on and on about, you know, I've read a hundred books this year. If you place a heavier emphasis on a quantity over quality, now please turn off this video. Personally, I think the quality of reading is much more important than the quantity of reading. You know, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that's like a common theme of what exactly we're doing here. I want you to walk away from a book feeling like your life just opened up. I want your perception to change after reading a really great piece of literature. I want your world to alter. I want you to have like a brand new understanding of the life that you occupy. But that's not that easy to do. You see, the quantity of reading or, you know, how many books you've read, that's very easy to define. You just have to read, you just have to read more and read even more and then you have this, you know, pseudo achievement happening. You can read a hundred books in a year and that's gonna sound very impressive at dinner parties. But you know what? If you wanna read a hundred books per year, you run the risk of not understanding a single one of them. And in that sense, you're developing a second degree of ignorance. That second degree of ignorance is a doctoral ignorance that comes after knowledge. So you can have the knowledge, you've read 100 books, but you understand none of it. Or, in the words of Alexander Pope, you are a bookful blockhead, ignorantly read. So given that we want to read for depth, we want to read for understanding, we want to read deeper into books, there has to be something, a mechanism, a something that keeps you on track. Because the human brain, as amazing as the human brain is, it's not a computer. It can't store information in the same way that a computer stores information. So therefore, we tend to forget things when we don't want to forget them. We tend to remember silly things that don't really matter. So how do we work with this machine, this thing right here to help us read deeper into literature? And that is what we're gonna talk about today. And I am gonna show you something really cool that I you know that I haven't talked about in a while. I talked about this concept before, about like two years ago, and that, that was one of the first videos that really blew up. And that concept was, or is, the concept of having a commonplace book to deepen your understanding of books. Starting a commonplace book is one of the best things that I've done for myself over the, over the past few years. And through reading a lot of books and through taking down critical notes and through, you know, through journaling and critically reflecting on these books, I think that's like one of the best ways that you can ingest literature in like a really deep fashion. There's no point memorizing passages from a book, but if you have private reflections with regards to some of the passages that you've collected, excellent. Most people make the mistake of, hey, I can just remember that in my head, but you know, but five days later, you ask the same person again, hey, what did you think of um, T.S. Eliot's Wasteland? He's gonna draw a blank. Here's the fact, your brain's not gonna remember everything that you've concocted. Your brain isn't gonna latch onto those critical reflections that you've had. Your brain is pretty terrible at holding on to this like very elaborate information because those pieces of information are so interconnected with many other concepts. It's very hard sometimes to retrieve the information if you're not that well versed in it. And if you don't even have a device or storage for you to store those critical insights that popped out uh, when you're reading a really, really good piece of literature, and that's setting you up for, you know, not understanding those 100 books that you've read. So this is why you definitely need a commonplace book. This is why you definitely need a personal encyclopedia. This is your own personal library of your notes, a depository of all of the crap that you've read. This is a depository of all your personal reflections on a book and also the interconnections between the books that you've read, all those very valuable interconnections, they need to be documented. Your brain is a very stupid machine. It doesn't remember that much. And also your brain is just like constant occupied by daily matters. You definitely need a system for you to take all of that crap in, for you to put in all of this information and for you to store this information and organize this information in, in, in a very effective fashion, in a very efficient fashion. So before the commonplace book, I took a lot of notes in the margins of the book, but a little later on, I realized I really need like a central system to compile all of these notes together. That's when I first started using OneNote, but today I'm gonna tell you something else, um, something better than OneNote. OneNote is great, but it's kind of scattered. It's kind of all over the place. Uh, the organization on OneNote isn't exactly that great. The linking between documents, it's its just not that efficient. But nevertheless, I stuck with OneNote for a very, very long time. It's kind of painful at times to organize my ideas, but right now, just about two weeks ago, I bumped into Notion. And this video is not sponsored by Notion, it's just a really cool tool um, that I found that you can definitely, definitely make good use out of. I have Notion on my computer, but basically Notion is this like all-in-one productivity system. It's great. You can search up other videos on how to use it. I'm not gonna tell you how to use it. I'm just gonna show you how 
I like to utilize Notion for my book notes. So I have a list of all the books that I want to read, and they're all labeled as reading, read, or pending. And as I scroll down the list, I know exactly which book、um, that I should read next. I know exactly which book I'm reading currently, and I know exactly how many books I've read in the past. It's a very effective system. You can customize the tags. You can do everything that you want, and even better, you can expand the page on each one of the notes and to take notes in that section. So you don't have to exactly jump around from one note. To Evernote and to jump on a website or something like that. Besides books, I also have this idea stump. So whenever I come across a really interesting article in a magazine or from a website, my idea stump is full of these articles, full of these references that I can later draw on to make videos or to write articles on, to write blog posts on. So as a whole, it's a very effective system. Then again, I'm not going to teach you how to use it. If you want to learn how to use Notion. You just just search on the internet. There are tons of videos that can you know that can tell you how to actually use this app as you know a very effective note taking system. But for me personally, it's a perfect commonplace book. And on the other hand, it also works on your phone. So when I have a random thought here and there, I just like document it on my phone. It's just completely. Completely fantastic. So check out the application Notion. It's completely free. You can use it however you want. Organize it. Come up with your own medium. Read the books that you want, and read those books deeper. Record your personal thoughts on a system like Notion. You might not like Notion. You can use something else. But here's the central idea. When you want to read deeper, you have to have a system for you to organize the ideas. Otherwise, all those things are gonna go haywire after you know after a month or something. You're gonna forget everything that you've read. Don't trust your brain because your brain's flaky. You want a system to document everything down, and I think Notion currently is my favorite system to do that. Thank you for watching this week's episode. If you haven't signed up for the newsletter, be sure to do so. Each week, we have exclusive goodies coming at you from the newsletter. And this week, specifically, I was honored to go on to the Socratic Method podcast, and and we've discussed an ins and outs of one of my favorite books of all time, Marcel Proust's Swan's Way. So if you're interested in that podcast episode, head over to the Socratic Method podcast YouTube page to watch the episode on Swan's Way and sign up for the newsletter. Anyway, R.C. Walden here, and I shall be signing off right about now.